I guarantee you're probably not gonna find anything quite as funny as a hedge fund manager crying on live TV about GameStop stock, but uh, we're gonna try. Not only see the um, emotion on your face, but hear it in your voice. I care. All right, guys, let's get on the gram and start looking at some memes. So this is a, a meme of nurses versus old people feet. So here we go. She's very afraid looking at the socks. Oh boy, she's feeling moth. She breaks them for impact. Oh! <laughs> oh my God, it's all over her face. <laughs> so basically this meme is a joke about how old people's feet sometimes are very dry, the skin is extremely flaky, and if you peel those socks off and if you do it real fast and uncontrolled, those flakes will go everywhere. It kind of looks like an anthrax bomb went off, uh, as if I know what that looks like. No, but seriously, it does. It looks like confetti. It's awful. Um, so yeah, definitely brace yourself or have like a eye protection or a mask. Even if this wasn't COVID times, you definitely want to be careful when you try to take some socks off because you do not want a bunch of skin flakes coming off into the air and getting in your face and... I, I saw another meme a long time ago about something similar to this, like old dry skin, like where the skin just like flakes off into the air and someone had like lip gloss on and it like landed and caught onto the lip gloss. It was disgusting. Um, yeah, the, the struggle is real. I get that. Refused bath all week. Complains to family that she hasn't been given a bath all week. <laughs> That's true. I mean, come on, Grandma. Look, if you're if you're gonna refuse the bath, you are refusing your right to complain about not having a bath. That's my opinion. That's ridiculous. This one says, my mental health is more important than my hospital staffing needs. I agree. You know, uh, I think hospitals definitely are putting their best interests before yours. They want to make sure that they have staff to take care of patients because if they do, they can make more money. Of course, they don't really care as much about the staff uh, and your mental well-being. For example, if you're working so many shifts, you're getting burned out, they don't really mind that because they're still making money. But of course, you know, you guys need to step up for yourselves and, you know, draw boundaries. Say, how much can I realistically work without getting to the point where I'm feeling burned out and suffering mental health consequences? Because you guys don't want to get burned out. Burnout is definitely super high in the medical field. And, you know, doctors, nurses, dentists, pharmacists, everyone in the field suffers a lot with burnout. So do what you can to protect yourself, set up some boundaries and try your best to just take care of yourself. When you see the day shift after a night shift, he spotted him. Yeah. Give him a hug. <laughs> He's like, come on in. He's <laughs> like, thank God you're I'm back. I'm so happy to see you. <laughs> uh, I used to do night shift, guys. It is a good feeling when you see day shift come because you know that the long night is over and sometimes the nights are not always so good. So that was, that was funny. Nurses shouldn't feel afraid to call in sick because we're only allowed three sick days a year. Nurses shouldn't come to work sick because they don't want to subject their colleagues to horrific staffing ratios. Nurses and patients deserve a guarantee of safe staffing. This is kind of a catch 22 because whichever way you go, something's gonna get messed up. So either your staffing is gonna take a little bit of a hit or you're coming to work, you're possibly infecting your coworkers, your patients, Honestly, I think they deserve someone who's not sick, but at the same time, they also need a nurse. Um, so that, that's tough because the hospitals are gonna give you a real hard time if you're trying to call out sick sometimes, especially if you're over your limit of call outs, like they're gonna potentially threaten you with disciplinary action, either suspend you or fire you if you call out um, too many times. So it's like one of those industries though, where I feel like you need to be able to call out sick, like the food industry. You do not want someone with like an active flu coughing all over your sub at Subway, right? Because then you're probably gonna get the flu when you eat that sub. Same situation applies if you're a nurse taking care of patients in the hospital. I guarantee you their health is not the greatest. So if you're sick, you could easily get them sick and possibly kill them, push them over the edge to where they can't handle whatever you've got. Maybe you've got the flu, maybe you've got COVID. I don't know, something like that. Uh, with COVID, I think we are starting to get a little bit better. Be like, look, if you've got symptoms, don't come into work right now. Take a test first. If you're positive, definitely don't come in right now. So I guess maybe... One good thing about this is it's starting to open up some eyes about, hey, we really don't need to be coming to work when we're sick because it's really not doing anybody any good. If anything, I think hospitals probably just need to do a little bit better is preparing for staffing. And especially right now with people potentially getting sick all the time, like you just need to be thinking about that actively. This is the dose of Ativan you wanted versus what was ordered. It's really funny. You've got the shack over there, which is basically the whole vial of Ativan you really wanted to give your patient. And then of course you've got 
the teeny tiny micro dose that the uh, provider ordered for your patient. And we've all been in this situation, I think, where you've got a patient who knows what's going on. Maybe they have delirium or just another issue where they're they're just going off the chain. They're like a code atlas because they're freaking out. Uh, and the doctor is a little afraid to probably give you a lot of Ativan. And of course, I understand why. They don't want to hurt the patient because then they look horrible. They could be sued. They could be medically liable if something bad happens. But at the same time, you don't want someone who, who has like delirium and is actively freaking out because that person could get hurt too. So once again, this is one of those tough spots where like pretty much whatever you do, you're potentially running into some issues. Um, but if you do nothing, you're also running into some issues. I think we've all been there where we really want to give that full dose of Ativan and yet we're only ordered to give an extremely small dose of Ativan and we're like, that's not going to do anything, doc. Like I remember one time, I think it comes in two milligrams per vial. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the doctor ordered 0.25 milligrams of Ativan out of the entire two milligram vial. And so I was essentially like pulling out a freaking magnifying glass to try to be like, I think I got this right. Like that's ridiculous. Like it's not even gonna almost get out of the syringe and into the patient. They're not gonna feel that. But then I guess they could say, well, we gave her out of it. So <laughs> technically, yes, you did, but come on, that's ridiculous. When the unit is staffed with float nurses and new grads, <laughs> what you're about to watch is a nightmare. <laughs> Yeah, they always joke that like float nurses and new nurses uh, are not entirely what you want your like whole staff for the night to look like because probably no one's gonna have a perfect idea of how the unit functions. Uh, people who float are unfamiliar with the unit, so they're they're not gonna even know the codes. It depends where they're flowing from, honestly. If they're like a frequent float, um, they maybe have come to your floor before and they could be totally fine. Um, some other float nurses who are usually almost always on one unit and just get floated to you, uh, they're probably not gonna know what's going on. So they're gonna act essentially like a new grad all night. And then you've got the rest of your nurses are new grads. So they're also like that because they're just not used to the job yet. Yep, those those shifts are not gonna go super smooth. It's always good to at least have a couple of uh, veterans on the floor where you're working who definitely know how the unit functions, what's going on. Nobody, asking a question during huddle. <laughs> Pour some gasoline on the fire. <laughs> Huddles are basically one of those situations where you are forced to stick around when you probably want to be doing other things like looking up your patients or actively giving reports. You can either get on with your shift or get off your shift and go home. So a huddle is one of those beautiful things where you're forced to sit there and listen probably to your manager uh, drone on and on about the same crap you've always heard about, uh, age cap scores and patient satisfaction, all this other junk. And you're just like, oh my God, can I please get on with my life? And so when someone asks a question in huddle, it keeps you there longer. And basically everyone's gonna probably be looking at that person asking the question like, shut up. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. What's the difference between Princess Elsa and a nurse? Only one of us is frozen inside too. <laughs> That's a joke about burnout. Um, there was another meme that I saw. I'll try to find it and post it up here, but it was like uh, someone saying the nurse was like laughing. It's like, ha ha ha, I'm already dead on the inside. Like, it's funny, but it's also sad because once again, it kind of goes into that burnout. Like it is so rampant in the medical field, guys. The burnout is horrible. And so if you're feeling like that, you definitely need to do something. Uh, look into a career change, talk to somebody, you know, do what you can, work less, uh, you know, find a hobby outside of work, do something to try to get your mind off of whatever is making you so unhappy and perhaps get out of it, find a different job, uh, you know, even if it's not even in healthcare. I do not wanna say to somebody, look, I know you have a degree in nursing and you have to be here your whole life. It's like, no, 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 you don't have to, look, Maybe you got into this thinking was one thing and you found out a little late, but you found out, oh my God, this is not for me. Your whole life should not be spent being miserable. Guys, I don't wanna tell somebody, you have to do it just because you got that degree. It's like, you can go back to school. I'm sure you went to school with people who were using nursing as a second career, but let's say that was your first career and you wanted to do something else after that. There are other jobs, there are other careers. Maybe there's something that will bring you more joy than being a nurse. That's not necessarily a bad thing. Nursing is not for everyone. Healthcare is not for everyone. I'm sure we all think of this at some point in time. Let's just be honest about this. There's a lot of negatives about healthcare. It's a very stressful job. It can be very depressing. And if you are really struggling with burnout and feeling dead on the inside, feeling frozen on the inside, all these things, I know it's kind of funny, but it's also kind of sad because it's true. A lot of people suffer with this. And you should do something. Look into other options for yourself because there's no point in going through the rest of your life being miserable. When they borrow your stethoscope, after all, why not? Why shouldn't I keep it? <laughs> They're talking about if someone lends you their stethoscope, you're you're tempted to try to hang on to it. I feel like that's more accurate with pens. I swear, you hand someone a pen to do anything and their natural instinct is to just hold on to that thing for dear life and not give it back. Something about pens. People just love taking them and holding on to them and never giving them back. Me bringing my work bestie into the med room to talk about some stupid shit we just saw happen. 
The bedroom is usually where your Pixis machine is. A lot of places keep them into a locked room just because that way it's more secure. You have to put in a code to get in there so people can't just run into your unit and try to break into your Pixis machine and steal it. Not that that's an easy feat anyway, but the point is it's usually like an isolated room. So there's a little bit more privacy in there. So that's a common place for people to go ahead and gossip about things. But at least look, if you're gonna do that, I don't care just so long as you make sure you look out every once in a while and make sure people are not waiting to get in there to get meds. Don't be like that, please. Be respectful of your colleagues. If they need to get something, let them in. How I sleep after denying a shift pickup. <laughs> He's sleeping like a baby, not even a care in the world. Yeah, I know, I guess some managers or staffing people think like, how could you ever say no to me? If like, you know, you weren't supposed to work and they call you like, hey, we really need you to come in. And you're like, no. And they're probably thinking, oh, what a horrible person. I can't believe they've done that. But you're just like, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's awesome. Patient believes she is dead. Vital signs suggest otherwise. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Please tell me that's a real note. That's hilarious. You would be surprised. Some people uh, put in some hilarious notes. I've seen a lot of other memes about people quoting mean things that a patient has said in the chart. Like patient said to go die, <laughs> like in the notes. It's funny, I mean, but yeah, it's part of a medical record. And if it's true, I mean, you're allowed to put it in there. They tell you stick to the facts, but sometimes people want to give a little extra spice. This is the psychiatrist after you told him that the patient wants to talk to them. He's like, nope, <laughs> he's gonna walk right in. It's accurate, I'm sure he's thinking, oh my God, I do not want any part of that. Sounds like a nightmare. <laughs> How about you stop calling them heroes and start paying them more? That would be fun, wouldn't it? Of course, we always like a raise and that would be nice. I think a lot of people have talked about like if you're in COVID units, like you should be getting like a uh, hazard pay because you know, you're putting your life at increased risk, being so close to this virus that could potentially kill you. And so I think, you know, there's some treats to that. And of course, the more you pay people, the more inspired they're going to be to show up to work and do an amazing job and keep coming back uh, and stay around. All right, guys, that's a good number of memes for today. If you've enjoyed this video and want more videos of me reacting to memes, definitely let me know. This video is kind of a shameless promotion also of my Instagram page. We are at NurseJank, so go ahead and follow us over there if you wanna stay in touch. Definitely gonna be trying to post a lot more over there, so go ahead and follow us. If you guys have any questions about anything, let me know down in the comments. If you like this video, please give me a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for future videos, and we will see you guys in the next one. Take care.